Hey man, it's such an honor to be with you again this evening. Didn't God do great things this morning in our midst? Hey man, didn't he move? Didn't he minister? He did a work in hearts. He built faith. Hey man, I believe that he's going to continue to do what he's done here tonight. Hallelujah. Seeing Brother West here tonight, it ought to build all of our faith. Amen. Living miracle of Almighty God. This is the result of the message that I preached this morning. When somebody is willing to touch God, when someone is willing to intercede and not let go until an answer comes, God can still reach in the hospital. He can still reach in to places where people are sick, and he can bring them out by his healing and delivering power. Amen. So good to see Brother West. I had the privilege of visiting him at Hendrick Hospital. He was not aware that I was there at the time, but I felt the witness of the Holy Ghost while I was there and uh, while I prayed for him. I do believe that God has touched this great man in a wonderful way. I believe that he's going to continue to do so. Amen. You're willing to take a risk, I'm convinced, all that is if that anything is possible. Yes, sir. And I also believe that the investment that you have made in uh, the eternal tonight in uh, taking up this offering to help uh, this uh, missionary in Virginia. I believe that God's going to open the windows of heaven for this church in a way that you never have before. God has a great ex great exchange rate. You cannot outgive him. Amen. Expect, expect for the windows of heaven to open in a way that you've never seen before. Amen. As always, I honor Brother Driscoll, and um, we are praying. We are continuing to pray for his dear wife. Amen. And um, I do uh, I do believe that the Lord gave me a word uh, for Brother Driscoll uh, for this before this service tonight. Uh, the scripture came into my mind: No weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. Yeah. Amen. Amen. For every tongue that shall rise against us in the day of judgment. Thou shalt condemn. Amen. It does not say that the weapon will not be formed. But the promise is that it shall not prosper. It doesn't matter what comes against us. In the physical or in the spiritual. Amen. God will lift up a standard and a barrier. Yes, sir. And I do believe that Sister Driscoll is going to be completely healed. Yes. Amen. I believe that God is going to touch that arm. I believe it. I believe it. She's going to come back stronger, praying harder, right. worshiping, uh, wor worshiping greater. Not that she yes, didn't sir. do that before. Right. Amen. But God is fixing to take her ministry to a whole other level. I oh, like God. I feel the whole world. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the prophetic all over me right now. Amen. All that this thing has been about has been, um, has been number one, it's been a spiritual attack against Brother and Sister Driscoll in this church. But in the midst of it all, it's been about going to a new level, a new dimension in God. Amen. You're fixing to see Sister Driscoll's ministry unfold in a way as the mother of this church. Amen. Because I'm telling you right now, if God can derail, uh, I mean, if the devil can derail the mother of the church, then it, it, it can affect the rest of the church. But you have chosen not to let it affect you. You have chosen not to let it get you down. Amen. God! It's fixing to burn something powerful and mighty through all of this. Amen. I very seldom do this. I very seldom do sequel messages. But I feel, I, I feel to continue on in conjunction with uh, what I preached this morning. So we are going to go back to the book of Matthew. I will save this other message for either... 
uh, Thursday night, um, a week from this Thursday, the 25th, or um, or uh, during our revival. Amen. Amen. We'll get to it another time. I, my God, I feel him moving tonight. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Matthew chapter 9, verse 19. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years. That's over a decade. All right. Came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be made whole. All right. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from yeah. that hour. Yes, sir. Yes, Amen. sir. Yes, sir. It's not an issue of can God heal you? Right. right. Come on. Or can God touch you? Right. Or can God fill you with the Holy Ghost? Come on. Yeah. Or can God do this and that or the other? Right. Come on. Come on. That's not even up for debate or discussion. God can do above and beyond what we can perceive or what we can imagine. Hey Amen. I just did a work for the Lord up here. I just picked up some trash. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. If someone would just take it to the next level and let's do this right, let's get it in a trash can. Hey Amen. Oh, you don't have to, Brother Driscoll. Yeah, no, no. It's not a question of can God. It's a question of what are you willing to do All right. to touch him? Yes, sir. What are you willing to do in order to touch him? All right, come on. Hey, Amen. God touch me. But do you ever do, do you ever uh, wonder and think that he might not want us to touch him? There you are. Just a thought. Uh -huh. Amen. How bad do you want it? Part two. Right. Jesus, let your anointing rest upon this is your word tonight. I take dominion and authority over anything and everything. That would be in opposition to your will and your purpose and your plan. I pray for your anointing. I pray for the favor of God. I pray, God, that whatever that resistance was we felt this morning, that it will unravel before our very eyes tonight. Well, I'm believing for people to get the Holy Ghost. I'm believing for miracles. I'm believing for signs. I'm believing for wonders. I pray that by the end of this message tonight, that faith would arise in hearts and in lives, and that someone would purpose within themselves to touch you. We will give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, and you may be seated. If I could get some water when it's appropriate. Thank you so kindly. I will... Um, I will just cover some of the foundation of uh, what I what I preached this morning, and then we will get into uh, into the meat of what I feel like the Lord wants uh, to communicate to us tonight. Amen. Amen. The thing that we have to understand. Amen. According to the pulpit commentary, the woman's touch was an ignorant and superstitious appeal to the mercifulness of Christ. In other words, um, people just, it, it was outside of their custom. It was outside of their logic and their way of thinking to get down on the ground, to, call, to crawl through thousands of legs, and to push through everything with an opportunity and with every possibility under the sun All right. of getting stopped, of getting trampled, yes, of getting stepped on. All right. Amen. Yes. 
I mean, it, it was uh, it was pretty intense. Right. I mean, the, uh, you're talking about an elderly lady, old enough to be my grandmother, or pro possibly my great grandmother. She she had to be in her in her nineties, if I'm correct, or even older than that. And just think of all of those feet. Uh -huh. Thousands of feet. If someone would have been, wouldn't have been uh, thinking right, I mean, she was taking a chance of someone literally stepping on her head. Yeah. If you please. I don't like to imagine that. I don't like, I don't like to go there. It's very gruesome. It's very graphic. It's a very, uh, very stomach turning, if you please. All right. Amen. She was risking losing her life. Right. But she was determined. Come yeah. Come on. Yes. She was going to touch him. Yes, sir. Oh, my God. Come on. Just a touch. Just a touch. That's all that mattered to her. At that moment and at that time, there was no other endeavor in her life that was important to her right. at that moment right. but touching Jesus. Amen. Come on, that's good. Hallelujah. Touching Jesus. Right was all that mattered. However, in which Jesus viewed this act of faith was of greater importance than the superstition which connected blessing with the touch. Right. In this situation, Jesus could easily look over the superstition and accept the faith. Right. In other words, she did not have to crawl through the crowd. Right. She would not have had to Get down on her hands and knees. Amen. Come on. Jesus had the ability to pinpoint and to detect wherever she was with the thousands that were pushing him right. and smothering on, him. Amen. He could have called directly yeah, come on. to her, yeah. ministered to her, touched her, healed her, and made her whole. All right. But he had already perceived, he had, he had already sensed in his spirit right. that someone was approaching him. Right. That someone was wanting to touch him. All right. Because he felt something come out of him. Yeah. Hold on. And it made her whole yes, sir. immediately. Yes, sir. Amen. Immediately. Yes, sir. And so, the people of this particular period of time perceive this woman to be ignorant. Right. But Jesus perceived it as great faith. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In view of this principle, we must come to an understanding that there is a vast difference between faith and great faith. All right. Come on. Great faith says, I'm going to do whatever I can out of the ordinary. Amen. Amen. Great faith is an indicator that if I have to get out of my pew tonight, uh -huh. if I have to do something that I don't normally do, if I have to move out of my personality, Amen. bless God, I am touching him before I hit that door. Yeah. It is nothing more and nothing less but great faith in a great God who can do great things. All right. Come on, man. Skipping through most of this. In the case and where we left off this morning, an example of this woman, it presents to us an experience we can all personally have. Right. Yes, sir. It is a matter of how desperate someone is All right. about your need. Yes, sir. If you're not desperate tonight, you're not going to receive what you need to All from right. God. Right. 
If you're not desperate tonight, if there's not some kind of something or another that's driving you, yes, come on, my God, then you're only going to get as far as the Psalter. All right. And you will not get any further than that point. You will not go beyond the sphere and the world that is around you right now to break into that other world and that other dimension where miracles, signs, and wonders and the supernatural is possible. Amen. How desperate are you? How desperate. Did you come to church tonight because if you had a fear that you missed that the pastor would call you? Did you come to church tonight because you felt that it was the thing to do? Or you feel like it's what you're supposed to do? Maybe you are here tonight because if you were not here, and if the rapture took place, maybe you wouldn't make it. All right, come on. My God, we'll have a yeah. Or maybe you're here tonight because you want to be obedient to the Word of God. Amen. Come on. You want to be faithful. Right. Which that's great. Yeah, that's awesome. You're more than halfway there if that's your attitude. Amen. But who's desperate tonight? All right. Come on. Yeah. Who's desperate tonight? Come on. My God. My God, our desperation should not be limited to circumstances in our life. Right. There should oh. always right. be something within me that indicates yeah. I'm desperate for you, Jesus. I cannot go another day. I cannot go another moment. I cannot go another service without you. Notice, and we also covered, it was not through her superstitious touch that she was healed, but through faith that prompted the touch. And we also talked about how it was a faith full of defects, ignorantly conceived, secretly cherished, furtively put forth and openly exposed and humbly confessed as if it had been a sin but yet because of true faith graciously accepted and rewarded. All right. But you have to understand the mindset of this lady with the issue of blood. Yeah. All she was interested in was touching him. Right. That's right. Was touching him. Now bringing it to our modern day. What if we all had the attitude all right. of just touching him? Yeah. Not even thinking about our needs. Oh. Not even thinking about if I could just touch him. Uh. I know that I'm going to receive what I need. If I could just feel the hem and the train of his garment, if I could just feel his presence, if I could just feel his goodness, if I could just enter into that place where I'm having a spiritual experience with Almighty God. All right, all right, all right. Come on, that's good. Yeah. I've heard about these things, out-of-body experiences that people have. Yep. You know, they have them in, in yoga, they have them in... Uh, New Age uh, circles, yep. what the out of body, they feel like that. Uh, that they feel like that they're they're being transferred to a world where they can forget all about their problems, all about their stress, and everything else, only to come crashing down. Right. Preaching in a way is like an out of body experience. Yeah, it is. Amen. Amen. You you uh you you come to church, you preach, the anointing is upon you for about 30 minutes of your life. You feel like you're in 
heaven to a degree. But then all of a sudden, it's over, 